Hello friends, welcome to the world of Lean Six Sigma. I am Mohit Sharma, your mentor and coach on Lean Six Sigma issues and problems. My viewers have been asking me to create a video on sample size calculation using Minitab. So in today's video, we are going to learn how to calculate sample size in Minitab. When you learn Lean Six Sigma, the first thing that is taught is basic statistics. In basic statistics, we learn there are two types of data that we have to work on. One is called discrete and the other one is called continuous. The discrete data is measured in percentages and the continuous data can be measured with mean and standard deviation. So I have two examples here. In one example, we will learn how to find out sample size when data is discrete. And in the other example, we will understand how to find out sample size when the data is continuous. So let's begin. What is the sample size if margin of error is 3% and the team is at 80% accuracy levels? So this is a common problem in most of the teams, how much sample size that we should monitor if our accuracy percentage is at 80%. So let's go to mini tab and see how this can be done. And the path for that is stat, power and sample size, and sample size for estimation. Under parameter column, you will have to select proportion. And the historic data says that we were at 80%. So we can't write 80% here. We will have to write 0.8 here. Margin of error for confidence interval is 3%. So what does this margin of error means? So margin of error means if I am reporting my number as 80% and I am saying margin of error is 3%, it could be 77% or 83%. I do not want to keep a high margin of errors. So I only want to keep my margin of errors within 5%. So in this particular case, I am keeping my margin of error at 3%. And how we are going to represent margin of error here as 0.3. And click OK. So if my margin of error is at 3%, my sample size should be 772. If I increase my margin of error to 5%, my sample size reduces. So if I have to be precise and accurate about what I am saying, I need to reduce my margin of error. There are other things also. If you go to options, the confidence level, you can increase this from 95 to 99%. And see what happens if I have the same margin of error, which was 0 0.03 here. Click OK. My sample size is 1304. Earlier, when I used margin of error as 0 0.03, and I use 95% confidence, my sample size was 772. So if I want to increase my confidence level, I need to increase my sample size. In most of the service industry, the organizations work at 95% confidence. So we should use 95% confidence and the margin of error should lie between 1 to 5%. Moving on to the next example, Estimate the sample size of mean cycle time of transactions in a process with margin of error of 5 minutes. Means whatever is the result which will be given by the mean will have plus minus 5 minutes as variation. The standard deviation of the previous 3 months data is 4.5. So let's see how this is to be done. The path remains the same. Stat, power and sample size. Sample size for estimation. Under parameter, now we will have to select mean. And the standard deviation is given as 4.5. If you do not have any historic data, then you can take a smaller sample of 8 transactions and see what is the standard deviation for the cycle time that you have captured for these 8 transactions. And the margin of error here is 5 minutes. That is what they, we are saying. In options, we will select 95% confidence because we are good with 95% and we will click OK. All right, if we want margin of error as five minutes here, the sample size is only six. However, whatever is the average cycle time represented by this sample size, 
will have a margin of error of 5 minutes. For example, the average is 20 minutes, then the variation could be from 15 minutes to 25 minutes, which is huge. That is not a good way of estimating. So let's reduce this margin of error to 1 minute. Oh wow, now I have to check 81 samples and I can estimate what is the mean cycle time of the transactions. However, if you want to further reduce this margin of error to 0.5 minutes means 30 seconds. Then you have to measure 314 as the sample size. So friends, I hope you understood how to calculate sample size with the help of Minitab in both discrete and continuous data types. I hope you like this video. If you really like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share this video with your friends. I'll see you in my next upcoming video. Till then, take care. Bye-bye. So you can buy my books on Amazon. The first book is 8 Steps to Problem Solving. This book talks about the Six Sigma concepts with the help of a case study. And the second book is Continuous Improvement, The Lean Way. So it is talking about the lean concepts and the case studies.